What dirty little secret does your profession hide that the consumer should know? If you're getting blown insulation installed in your attic, ask for the spec sheet on the material they plan to install. It will tell you the number of bags your job will require. Ask the installer to confirm how many bags will be installed. Count the empty bags. Unethical folks can turn their blowers way up and close the material gate. We're installing extra fluffy insulation in your attic, mostly air. It'll settle a lot over time. You got ripped off. Get a quote by the bag, not by the inch. Hotel manager. Most of the time the comforter is only changed when visibly dirty. Always take off the comforter and use the blanket in the closet. Or ask them to bring you one. A comment I posted about a year ago. Parents. Make sure to get involved in you children's education. Teacher it's that time of year to make class placements for next year. Every year there are two or three teachers in the school, elementary, who are so awful. We cry over which students we have to sacrifice to them and hope they are strong enough to survive a year with Mr. or Mrs. So and so. Flight simulation engineer here until Sully landed his Airbus in the Hudson. The average chances of surviving a commercial jet water landing were less than 5%. Highest recorded survival was the Ethiopian 767 with 29% survival. The seat back safety card and life vests were simply placebus for nervous passengers. Follow on, Sullen Bajas technique is now part of pilot simulator training, so chances have increased. However if it happens in the ocean you might survive the crash, but will almost certainly die of hypothermia, drowning or exposure. The larger the menu at a restaurant the greater the chance your food was frozen and just reheated. High school teacher here, after a month of summer, I've already forgotten 90% of students names. HVAC work, the amount of black mold in nursing homes is outrageous. If you're considering putting an elderly family member in one, glance inside the AC unit or look at an air vent, you can see it too. You don't have to be an orthodontist to do orthodontic. Just a dentist. Don't subject your kids or yourself to braces slash treatment, unless the provider actually is certified in orthodontic. It can make the difference between 7 years of treatment that reverses itself immediately, and 11 months that lasts a lifetime. Your city doesn't spend nearly enough making sure the infrastructure is decent. Sign language interpreting. A huge amount of them are underskilled and uncertified. When they don't understand a deaf person, they will simply make up a translation and the deaf person never hears it. It leads to a lot of hearing people thinking a lot of deaf people are morons. And a lot of deaf people distrusting and being frustrated by hearing people patronizing them. Planetarium operator. Nobody in the space sciences cares about constellations. They are used to help define the location of astronomical objects. But I bet most astronomers don't know the names of more than 5 or 6 constellations. I only talk about them because the general public finds them interesting for some reason I would skip them if my boss would let me. I google probably 30% of what I fix. The only reason you can't do it is somehow the ability to google well is difficult. Healthcare has become more oriented to customer service and satisfaction than patient care. Providers are at constant odds with administrators to balance profitable care with quality care which are polar opposites. Having surgery to remove a tumor slash diseased tissue, hospitals will hold on to that tissue in the US for a period of 10 years because they are legally obligated to do so. After 10 years, they want to get rid of it ASAP. It's not cheap to store or dispose, so they give it to a company like mine and then we sell it for a hefty price to a pharmaceutical company to run experiments on. We look the other way when it comes to these experiments, but tell the hospital we know what's going on, and no way are, will this tissue be used to extract DNA. Basically, yeah, I'm not proud of this work, left last month, but frick is it lucrative. Not my main profession, but did some technical writing as a freelancer. Many companies actually pay people to post on social media and review sites and write positive fake feedback. So, when you're on Amazon and find someone writing a review about a skillet for example, and they say this is a great product, I really enjoyed it, and the instructions were clear. You know it's a real person profile, but with fake review. Screen printing shops are dirty as frick, and you should always wash new shirts before wearing them. 
There are some really bad dentists out there, and you probably don't even realize it. Most people stick with a dentist, based on their insurance, chairside manner, and how painful the injection is. Otherwise, they have no idea the quality of work that they are getting. I have seen some absolutely abysmal work, and ethically slash professionally, I can't tell the patient, hey, doctor so and so did a real crappy filling, and now you need a root canal, because he screwed up. Instead I tell them that things happen, and I'm the bad guy, because the filling only lasted one year. If you're in a new town, and looking for a new dentist, call a local endodontist, and ask who he goes to. They see all the work from local general dentists and you can bet your ass they are going to the best one. There is a reason why your bar has loud music on. If you can't keep a conversation going you are going to be drinking faster and more likely to order another round. Everyone is an alcoholic. On cocaine. Or both. Film industry. Your nurses and doctors talk about you in the break room. The 3 second rule is used with most prescription medications. Furniture delivery man here. When items are damaged I'd say that 99% of them happen before they get to the dispatch warehouse. In addition every time you force employees to take safety footwear off or cover them most companies won't cover any injuries caused as a result and the worker is out of pocket. I work at a pizza place. The more toppings you order the fewer of each you actually get while still being charged the same price per topping. Regarding video game with post-release support, usually online, especially ones which are not that crazy popular, if you are very vocal member of the community who keeps talking and talking about a given game, you might be an inside company meme. I've seen it few times. Of course smart, nice people who give constant actual feedback are respected and often mentioned by the devs when they talk to each other, but people who keep complaining and hating are targets of jokes in such company. Not really a dirty little secret, but I know some people would throw a fit. A lot of use by dates for food are arbitrary. By the time the people who sell you the food directly get it in. We have no idea when it was plucked slash killed slash prepped etc. And have to trust our vendors kept it to certain standards. Often the salad my store sells goes bad before the expiration date. But the sandwiches are good for a week plus longer. Water bottles and honey all have expiration dates on them despite the product not actually expiring. And many fruits we get in are pulled when they look bad. Not X days after we get it in. Others are pulled X days after prep. Despite still being perfectly fine to eat. And some food that's good until X day heads prepped X one day and stays on the shelf slash bin for a week with a different expiration date. The tops of your drink cans are gross. You should always wipe a drink can clean before drinking out of it, and preferably just pour it in a glass. They get crap all over them during storage slash transportation. They get walked on if someone needs to climb over the pallet they are loaded on. And don't get me started on some of the crap I've seen inside drink coolers. Disgusting. Cans also don't transport well on pallets. Cans pop slash puncture, and then that drink attracts flies which in turn create maggots. Former drink delivery guy. Teachers aid here. A surprising amount of teachers I know actually hate kids. It doesn't seem like it when they actually teach though. So I find it so f weird. Please ask for your therapist's credentials. Not in a challenging, aggressive way unless they purport to be a life coach. Then be skeptical, but just to ensure that they are who they claim to be. There are so many counselors operating illegally or in legal gray areas in the US. It's mind boggling. Some states don't protect titles like counselor or therapist, giving free reign to anyone who wants to set up shop. Good. Qualified therapists want you to get the best treatment. Many people who have terrible, negative experiences in therapy are seeing someone underqualified or not qualified at all. Just ask. So I'm an EMT and to check oxygen levels we use a $10 device that can be bought on Amazon. We will charge you $30 or more for checking your oxygen levels. Doctors offices do the same, so I bring my own equipment. Planes are actually super safe. Virtually all crashes are caused by pilot error. Oftentimes we start fixing them and find stuff that should have caused a major problem, but somehow didn't. Like there is no logical reason why some aircraft are still in the air, but they come back every day. I'm a mortgage underwriter. 
99% of the decision making was made by data analysts and actuaries long before you ever applied for the loan. Most of what I do is make sure the data that got entered into the underwriting automated system was keyed in accurately by making sure the supporting docs say what the loan officer slash processor says they say. I very, very rarely have to make an actual eligibility decision beyond this appraisal, is slash isn't crap. Lots and lots and lots and lots of animals die in the process of making your medicines. Get used to the idea. I work in mortgages. The fees are not hidden. You just signed a bunch of paperwork without reading it. The fee schedule is not even that much. 3, 4 pages. 14 point font. Properly spaced. Saying if you do X. We charge you Y fee. But people get surprised when they incur fees. So many just can't be bothered to read the mortgage paperwork before signing it. It's amazing. Also, I have the discretion to waive or just not charge a lot of those fees. If the client just asks me, but some people would rather bish and scream at me. If a client behaves like a decent human being, I may cut them a break. If the client would rather yell at the first person that speaks to them, the fee gets charged. When you ask for your drink strong at the bar, but refuse to pay for a double, we will just reverse the order of how we make your drink. Mix will go in first then liquor last. You think you are being slick by not having to pay for a double shot and you think we are a great bartender. Moral of the story, don't try to be slick with people who make your food or drinks. Used to work at Domino's Pizza, when you order extra cheese on a pizza, we didn't actually put extra cheese. We just put one half the regular amount of cheese on the sauce, and the other one half on top of the toppings. If you really want extra cheese, order double cheese. All the big wigs of Canadian telecom companies meet every so often, to make sure they each keep a stranglehold on their own little piece of the market. Everyone will offer almost exactly the same service for the exact same price, so there is no competition. They all stay rich, and we all get fricked. Highest MRP for telecom services in the world here, at least it was a few years ago, may have dropped to 2 or 3 now. Anybody can claim to be an seer expert, seriously anybody. Animal shelters lower the age of animals, usually of those over 6, because that's when it's hardest to adopt them out. Also no kill doesn't mean no kill, it means less than 1 in 10 animals are put down. If you're unnecessarily rude to your barista, you're probably getting decaf. Plumber here, there are so many things all of you are capable of doing slash fixing around the home. I can't tell you how many toilets I fixed, shower drains unclogged. Leaks stopped etc. That took no tools slash or a simple tool. In literally 2 minutes. A 15 minutes educational video on how most of the plumbing in your house works would lose me maybe even a few thousand a month. Ramp agent here. I deal with airplanes from them coming to a stand. Until they depart. Your bags get manhandled. We can have 150 bags off then on in a 15 minute window. They have to get from the cargo door all the way to the middle. Bags with four wheels are the greatest thing since sliced bread, since they just roll. Sports bags with no wheels are literally held down. We mean no unintention, but there is no choice when you fly with the budget airline that rhymes with dry hair. I work in wholesale. If you pick up and a package shows up via USBS, we change the shipping method because it's cheaper and faster. According to our quote, we also save sometimes more than $10 doing that. You can call the company and request they refund you the difference, because USBS is always cheaper. Well this thread is depressing. It's support nowadays equals how to Google. I'm a freelance copy editor slash proofreader. A large portion of the books in my portfolio were previously published and edited. Meaning, the author paid someone to edit it already. Why then? Did they still want slash need to hire me? Because they were still absolutely filled with errors to the point where reviewers would comment on the poor editing. In the freelance editing world, there seems to be no shortage of people who will take authors money but not do a good job. Typically these are random people on Fiverr and similar sites. To avoid this, you should hire editors that come recommended by people you trust. If that is not practical, then you should at least get an editor to do a sample edit of 1000, 2000 words. Perhaps throw in some errors on purpose. If they catch those errors, 
or even errors you didn't put in deliberately, then they're good. That ambulance chasing lawyers actually chase ambulances. Retired milkman. Here, we frick your wives. They can't resist us. The uniform. The chivalry. The milk. Works. Every. Single. Time. I work in a casino resort. Pretty much everything here is comped. The only people who really pay for anything are non-gamblers and first-timers. I design building structures. It's amazing the number of existing building and industrial plants I've gone into where they are newly renovated and about ready to fall down. One chemical plant in particular they had run high voltage, 4160 V, through the main structure supporting ethanol lines. They cut out the structure to run the electrical conduit. I'm in it. 90% of the time the first page of Google has the answer to your question. Not dirty but something everyone should know. I work in the music industry and guarantee that, if there's an option, to submit your music at a label, management company, whatever someone will listen to it, guaranteed. Veterinarians will get the credit for doing dental work on your cats and dogs, but it's really the techs doing most of the work. Not all techs are registered either. The teacher's break room, that mysterious land of wonder, that no student dare enter, it's a table and chairs with a counter with a sink and microwave. The teachers don't have fun in there, for their 15 minute lunch break. They just plan or grade. I used to be a janitor. We cleaned the sinks and the urinals with the same brush. Physical therapist. If you go to PT, and they put you on a bike for 30, 45 minutes to warm up, and then they spend 5, 10 minutes stretching you and that's a wrap, you should find a different clinic. Never, ever. Trust TripAdvisor restaurants and their food safety, just because they got high ratings. Maps lie, GI's consultant. I work in a hospital pharmacy, the price of everything is insane. Chapstick, $40 before insurance, a small vial of epinephrine, $90. If you order from any major retailer you should already know that your crap gets thrown around in the warehouse, so that. Worked for 12 years for a fuel company. Here is something everyone should know. 1. Some cars in Canada and the States say you must run premium fuel in them in the owner's manual. This is not true. This is part of an economic stimulus agreement between major car manufacturers and fuel companies. Running 87 instead of 91 does not make a difference. Engine knocking as is often described as a side effect of running low grade fuel is a high grade vehicle is a myth. 2. This one may be Canada specific. But, heating oil, that you run in your home to heat it, is nothing special. It is diesel. Heating fuel is sold for about 1.50 per liter. Clear diesel is sold for 90 cents per liter. It's the same thing. There is also a product called colored diesel. It is clear diesel with a small bit of red dye added to it. To distinguish it from clear diesel. It is always 16 cents cheaper per liter than clear diesel, because it excluded the 16 cent per liter government road tax, and is only to be used in non-road vehicles like construction equipment. It is the exact same product, but if you get caught with it in your tank instead of clear diesel you can get a huge fine, and so would the station and attendant that sold it to you. You want to save money? Put colored diesel in your heating fuel tank instead of heating oil. It's the same thing. 3. While working for this fuel company I was paid $20 cash per fake email account I opened and used to write positive reviews of the company on social media and Google. I have like 35 mail account I was paid to open, and used to bury true but negative reviews of the company. This happens a lot. All over the world. Don't put too much weight into online reviews. They are very easy to forge. Note, I needed the money. I was young. I work at a commercial bank. Check the math on fees and such. It's a lot more manual of a process with the possibility of human error than I expected. I work for a dit, and they silence us immediately if we sap. Pilot here. The whole turn off the cell phone thing doesn't matter 99.99% of the time. However, it's that 0.01% of the time that we worry about. Most cell phones nowadays, like iPhones and Androids, don't operate on the same frequency as the equipment we are worried about. But it's that one guy with the cell phone, made in Mongolia in 1996 that's going to ruin it for everyone. 
could we spend more time going through everyone's electronics, and saying you can use this, 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 and this but not that, unless we are over 14, 500 feet, we could, but A, it would take forever and B, you wouldn't remember it, or get it right, so please, turn the damn thing off, when we are landing the plane. As a photographer, 99.9% .9 of what I do is common sense, anybody who took a couple moments, to look at a situation, with an understanding of their equipment, can take a great picture, most of the time, you just don't have the right equipment. Coffee shop we'll give you decaf if you're rude. HVAC guy here. Basically the life of your air conditioner is largely based on how well the refrigerant lines were evacuated upon installation. A well installed system can last 20, 30 years with only a couple major repairs. However since 99% of installing contractors don't care, or don't know how to install properly, the average system only lasts 10, 12 years nowadays. The restaurant I work at microwaves raw chicken to cook it. It's disgusting and it's our best seller. Customers details are not kept as securely as they should be, who said that? There's literally a quote in a software engineering book that says when trying to get a contract, you can put the price a little down, and after you have it, renegotiate. I work at a local, family owned hot dog shop, and we sell lemonade that's fresh squeezed every morning. We actually just mix a giant vat of water, concentrate and sugar. Sometimes when clients send in their artwork for billboards and crap they don't include bleed, so we just forbid with a little content aware action on photoshop and sometimes the client asks to see what bleed we're using, and they get mad when it's not their original artwork. Mattresses are marked up usually around 100%. I work in a tribal casino, if you're a member of the tribe, nothing bad happens to you, ever, the blame gets shifted to a non-tribal employee who was involved or swept under the rug. They care about your computer's security and then have developers in foreign countries including Russia and China handle the code and security as well as your data. They will fire a sysadmin with root access and tell them they have to continue working there. They'll also have one person in charge of major infrastructure system and then, when the system crashes affecting millions of people and that sole employee is unavailable. Blame the employee instead of realizing they should have at least 3 people available to do that work. Viralagal here. Was your attorney able to settle your car accident case for a decent sum of money from the other driver's liability policy? No they didn't. The freaking Viralagal did. High end clothing retail when customers ask, do you have this item in the back? The answer is usually no, but we'll just go in the back, to check to get the hell away from you, and eat a snack. Vaccines actually work, and are not a scam. All the freshly baked, but compre made, bread slash pastries are generally baked the night before, and left on roller carts with plastic bags on top overnight. This doesn't seem like much of an issue, since you don't see the fat rats that roam the store overnight. But I think we both know why fear fat now. If you get injured, and hire a lawyer and the lawyer directs you to a physical therapy business, where they accept liens. Don't do it, the lien is letting you get treatment without paying up front, but rather after your injury case settles but with interest. If you simply pay for the treatment up front you will end up with more money overall, once your case settles. Your landlord is likely making more money from the property values rising than from actual rent. Profit from rent may be just $100 a month, yet the property value is going up $1000 a month. In fact. You could easily refuse a rental increase that's imposed on you, and your landlord will agree not to raise your rent. Lawyers and judges usually don't want people to know about jury nullification. Basically it's where a jury refuses to find a person not guilty, because they don't agree with that particular law. It's been used before in colonial times, when jurors refused to follow British maritime laws. It's also been used to protest the Fugitive Slave Act. This is just a very brief summary of what jury nullification is. I'm sure someone else could give a more in-depth explanation than what I could. My old job was at a grocery store. They sells ground chuck for 2.49 slash LB and ground sirloin for 2.89 slash LB. They are both the same cut of meat. Nursing. We. Are. So. Understaffed. On top of that. Our patient to nurse ratios suck. 
Why pay 6 RNs to take 5 patients each when you can pay 5 to take 6? Yeah. I'm sorry your nana has been laying in her own excrement for 2.5 hours. She's 300 pounds. Thrashes and kicks at us when we try to move her. And because we're all drowning. It's hard to find the right moment when we can all make it into the same room at the same time to teamwork a difficult patient. I don't even care about patient satisfaction surveys anymore. I had the father of a 29 year old woman who was moving independently and not confused. Go off on me for taking 15 minutes to get her sprite. I told him straight up I had a patient have a heart attack and I was attending to more pressing matters. The patient actually just complained of chest pain. Which is a massive time consuming workup we have to do when that happens. The thing that super sucks is that every time you hit your call light for some dumb crap. Like asking for your 6th popsicle in 4 hours. It bings an alarm very loudly on the whole unit. And the timer is recorded and gets counted against us when we get our unit patient care ratings. Yeah. I took 15 minutes to get to your call light to ask me to bring you that 6th popsicle. But frick me for being stuck in Nana's room while she's fights me. Trying to rest up the fourth she pulled out and cleaning up her 20th bowel movement of the night. Right? Emergency management. The next Katrina is right around the corner and we are riding on luck at the moment. I work in dry cleaning. One of the spotting agents we use is called Digest, which is made of powdered cow stomach. The enzymes in the Digest literally eat organic spots. It's extremely effective. You can DIY digest by applying saliva to food spots. I've removed blackberry jam from white cotton by just repeatedly spitting on the spot and scraping it clean. Warning, it takes a whole lot of time and saliva, and the process is disgusting but free. I work as a master control operator for a TV station in my local area. I work weekend shifts from 3am 3pm, and I get no breaks. I can go to the bathroom quickly, stand up and walk around my station. But I'm always required to be in front of my station in case dead air or other technical difficulties occur. If something goes wrong, while I'm in the bathroom it's on me. It is an incredibly boring job, and I hate it. New furniture. Find out where that stuff is from. Even the expensive Chinese or Vietnamese stuff is cheaply made junk. They will claim things it's made out of whatever wood, but it's all just press board with a fancy veneer. Also, the upholstery is riddled with formaldehyde. Many years ago, 2009, I worked at a Dunkin Donuts. You know, a typical summer job for a college freshman. The people I worked with were pretty awful. One time I saw this guy drop a whole tray of freshly glazed donuts on the disgusting, sticky, disease ridden, fast food, mop watered floor and proceed to pick them up one by one and put them back on the same tray to sell to customers. Told him to stop. He didn't listen to me. Same thing with the donut holes. Quit the next day. My boyfriend works at Del Taco. You know their super good crinkle cut fries? When the store runs out the manager sends someone over to the Walmart across the street and they bring back a few bags of great value frozen crinkle cut fries. They never get complaints. There is so much waste in the military at the beginning of the fiscal calendar. M4 range for 30 soldiers? Here's 10k rounds. Near the end of the fiscal calendar though no one can order vehicle parts and the printers have no ink slash toner. A new car built by my company leaves somewhere traveling at 60 miles per hour. The rear differential locks up, the car crashes, and burns with everyone trapped inside. Now, should we initiate a recall? Take the number of vehicles in the field. A. Multiply by the probable rate of failure. B. Multiply by the average out of court settlement. C a times B times C equals X. If X is less than the cost of a recall, we don't do one. 